from you. There should be a word on the tip of our tongue when it relates to you, God, and that should be Abba, Daddy. Because you, yes, you are a majestic and powerful God. Yes, you are Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, but you're still Dad. Help us to behave as sons and daughters. Help us to understand the rights we have as children of God. Help us to understand the mission that you've given us as children of God. Lord, as this word goes forth, I ask that faith come now in Jesus' name. I bind all influence from outside forces. I I bind every demonic attack on each mind as the word of God goes forth. Every hindrance, every distraction, it's eating time. It's time to feast on the word of God and to grow. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. I thank you that you are breaking up the ground, the follow ground of every heart right now to begin to receive this word that we need, Lord. I ask that you would impart to me every single gift at maximum capacity that you've given me to feed your people, God. Allow I surrender myself to your Holy Spirit to use me now to speak to these people. This is not my time, not my pulpit, not my sermon. It's all yours, God. I surrender myself to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Glorious rest. Can you say that with me? Glorious rest. That's the kind of rest that still produces something, okay? Uh, You've heard the phrase couch potato, all right? This is a person that just sits around the house all day, doesn't accomplish much. So in the natural, all right, we must understand that There is activity that must be done when it comes to working or keeping the house or even keeping ourselves, okay? Nothing is achieved by natural rest except uh, the reemergence of energy to keep going, okay? So man can accomplish nothing in himself when he's at rest uh, with his physical body. So God gave me a revelation while we were on vacation uh, out there in the middle of the um, Gulf of Mexico, All right. And he told me this uh, during a praise and worship service. He says, Damien, I can get more or or do more through your rest than your activity. So what's that mean? It means that as your pastor, there's all kinds of good ideas out there that can help the church grow. All right. There's many things that can come from my own mind all right, separated from God that sound like wonderful ideas, but all my busyness and my ideas produces zero glory for God. So, Damien, if you want to give me glory, I need you to be at rest. There is more glory to be had for God in our rest than in our own activity. And I'll tell you why. The Bible says that there is a way that seems right, seems like a great, wonderful idea. But in the end, that way only leads to death and destruction and failure. On Wednesday night, I began this message, and this is uh, it's called Glorious Rest, because the type of rest that I'm talking about is a rest that leads to God receiving glory from your life. You have to learn how to wait on the Lord. Say this with me. I must wait on the Lord. Okay? Because the word of God says that it is in him that we live, that we move, we live, we move, and we have our being. So, when God orchestrates it, when God gives you the plan, when God reveals it, then you move. That's the beauty of traffic signals. The beauty of traffic signals is once we all have an understanding of what the colors mean, there shouldn't be any accidents at the intersection. So the reasons we have accidents in our spiritual lives is because we don't respect the intersection. We don't, rest, we don't stay at rest, okay? We don't wait upon the Lord. A lot of times, here's what we do, okay? And I'm not preaching at you. I'm preaching to you because, like I said, I, I surrendered my tongue to God anytime I preached. So what you hear coming out of my mouth is not just for you. It's for me. 
I've got to be the first partaker of the word that's coming out. But here's what we do the, the majority of the time. We act, we crash, we pray. We act, some, 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 a good idea comes to mind, there's a way that seems right, we act real fast, we do it, quit our job, move, do whatever, we crash, we pray. But the right way is to be still and pray first. Pray first, hear, and then go. And that's exactly what glorious rest means. Each letter stands for something. The, a, the R stands for revelation. Can you say revelation? revelation? We first must have a revelation for God before we do any great activity. Okay? Because it is in him that we live and move and have our being. We shouldn't be quitting jobs. We shouldn't be doing anything. Okay? This, our lives don't belong to us anymore. So we wait for the revelation to move. Okay, during the time of the captivity of the children of Israel, they were in the desert for many years and they could not move until the cloud moved by day or the fire moved by night. Do you know why? Because they were in the scorching desert. Had they left the comfort of the cloud, the covering of the cloud, they would burn up and dry up. And that's where our crashing comes from. We burn up and dry up when we do things without following the spirit of God first. Amen. Let's continue. So we want, okay, we were at R. So R is revelation. E stands for equipping. Can you say equipping? All right. So not only equipping, but empowerment. So God gives us a revelation. He then empowers us to carry out his divine will. Okay. Then we have S for strategy. Can you say strategy? So God gives us a revelation. He empowers us to do it. He gives us the strategy on how to do it. And then T stands for triumph. Can you say triumph? Triumph means victory. So God always leads us into victory. And I'm trying to tell you that victory comes from rest and not your own activity. So victory comes from we wait on the Lord. Those that wait on the Lord, he will renew their strength. We wait on the Lord. We get a revelation. We get empowered. He gives us a strategy. And then comes triumph. Amen. So let's begin. If you weren't here Wednesday night, I implore you to get the CD. Uh, our CDs are on sale now until whenever. They're two for five dollars. They used to be one for five dollars. I'll tell you why they're two for five dollars now. Is because we want you to give one away to somebody. Okay? So only two for five dollars. We want you to put that uh, into the hands of someone that can be blessed by the word of God. So today we are talking about our topic is glorious rest. And we're covering the first letter. And R stands for what, church? Revelation. revelation. R stands for revelation. Okay, so what is revelation? Revelation is the revealed will and plan of God resulting in glory for himself. Okay, all right. We can't be, afford to be like the enemy, okay? The devil, the first fallen one. He decided that he wanted more glory for himself. So he rebelled against God and acted as an individual. Okay, I'm not, not sorry, not as an individual, but he exercised his free will. Okay, because none of us are robots. We've got a will. Okay, so he exercised his free will to say, I want a throne above God's throne. And that got him kicked out of heaven, didn't it? And you know what? All of us, if we seek to exalt ourselves in any way, we're going to be humbled. Down is the way up. Say, say this with me. Down, Down is, the way up. is the way up. What I mean by that is you get on your knees. You humble yourself to God. You say, God, I really want this, but nevertheless, please keep a nevertheless in your pocket. Please always have one on standby to say, I really want this. It looks really good, but let me pause. Let me come to the divine intersection of life. Let me remember that I'm not running anything, and let me say, nevertheless, not my will be done, but let thine will be done. 
Because God's will always leads to glory for himself. So what is revelation? Revelation is the revealed will and plan of God resulting in glory for himself. So he doesn't hide it. Ask. If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. God, what is your plan? Give me a revelation on what to do here. I don't know what to do. How many of you would like a doctor to come in and uh, and perform uh, surgery on your heart and, and willingly admit that he has no idea what he's doing? None of you say, uh, nope, nope, uh uh-uh, not today. You're not cutting on me. Okay, but listen, okay, because we don't want to die, right? So we don't want them operating on us. But listen, sometimes we are taking our own hands, our own vision, our own intellect, and applying it to our own life, and that's no different than an unskilled doctor performing surgery on us. Okay? So slow your lives down. So many, so many of you are so far out of where God wants you to be is because you're living off your own will and not God's revelation. So God's revelation is the revealed. He doesn't hide it from us. The revealed will and plan of God resulting in glory for himself. Equipping. We're going to study each of these in the coming weeks. Equipping or empowerment. What does that mean? It is the spirit of God coming upon us to fulfill his plan for his glory. Remember, it's anything you do for God is not by might or nor by power, but it's by his spirit. So he equips us. He reveals his will to us. Then he equips us by his spirit to perform his will or his plan for his glory. The S in strategy. What does strategy mean? This is strategy. It is the specific instructions and steps to triumph that God reveals to us. It's his divine will being broken down into a plan that man can carry out by the spirit of God. So it's strategy. It's what to do. For instance, when the children of Israel went up against Jericho, they were given a strategy For seven days, march around the city of Jericho. And on the last day, I believe they they, they marched around it seven times. Now, what if they had only done it five times? The walls would not have fallen. That is why many of us, this is good, this is God right here, listen to this. This is why many of us still have walls up in our lives. Why the enemy has not fallen, why we have not been able to go in and get the victory, is because we have not obeyed strategy to the exact T. He reveals his will to us. He empowers us to do it. He gives us strategy. And finally, the letter T stands for triumph. Can you say triumph? Triumph Triumph is this. It is victory and glory for God by his power alone through our faith and obedience. That's how victory comes. That's where triumph comes from. This is how your rest, whew, I thank God for rest. I thank God for the revelation of this word because a lot of pastors quit. A lot of pastors give up. A lot of pastors fall down because they want it so bad that they they allow it to invade their personal lives and they try to get strategy, they try to do all these things on their own and it takes time away from their families, and then their families are destroyed. I thank God that God has given me rest at year three to be able to slow down, get revelation that leads to triumph. Listen, I want you all to take this into your life. This, is, this word is so good. Rest. If you want victory, all victory. See, your victory that results from what you did leads to your glory. But victory that comes from God leads to his glory. And he said this, that he is not willing to share his glory with anyone. Let's go to John chapter 2. And this is a series. It it has to be a series because if I preach this all at one time, we'd be calling in off work tomorrow. All right. John chapter 2, we're going to see rest in motion. Say this with me. Rest Rest. in motion. Motion. So I'm going to show you in the word of God the principle of rest in John chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. All right? 
and I'm going to be still for a minute and give the cameraman a break. John chapter 2, beginning in verse 1, and it says this. And on the third day, what day? And on the third day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. So not just Jesus, but his disciples were there too. Because listen, the divine plan of God also takes the help of men. Did you hear that? The divine plan of God also takes the help of men. We are Christ's representatives here in the flesh. So he wants to reveal his will to others. He wants us to shine in this world for his glory. So he's going to need our help if we allow him to. So, and both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus saith unto him, they have no wine. So Mary leans over to Jesus and says, they have no wine. Jesus say unto her, woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. Say triumph. My hour is not yet come. So there is a glory for God to be had in every situation. There's glory. He wants glory. How many agree that God is after glory? I hope you believe that because he's worth all honor and all glory and all power. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, and, and there's no time in heaven. But there are beings that have been created that just stay there and worship God all the time. So you can't tell me this guy's not after glory everywhere. Not only does he want glory in heaven, he wants it on earth also. Okay? So, Jesus said, mine hour is not yet come, or... It's not yet time for glory to be revealed, all right? Verse 5. And the reason Mary was concerned is because it, was, it would be an embarrassment for those that were having the wedding for them to run out of wine, and she had a love and concern for the people, okay? So Jesus saw his mother's love and concern for the people. All right, verse 5. His mother saith unto his servants, Whatsoever he saith to you, do it. Say this with me. Revelation and empowerment. Okay, so here's the revelation. Mary got a revelation. And she says, I know who he is. And I know what he can do, but they don't. So let me give, let me give a revelation. This is the beauty of God's word. The beauty of God's voice. He's gonna, she said, listen, whatever he says do, do it. So say this with me again. Revelation empowerment. So what she was telling them is, listen, I'm trying to reveal something to you that this is the son of God and he is after glory. So my revelation to you, men and women today, is this, brothers and sisters, that she said, whatever he says do, because he's always after glory, remember? Whatever he says do, do it. So that means that Nothing that he would tell them to do would be beyond their scope. Some of you missed that. Nothing God ever tells us to do is beyond our scope. No matter how big it seems, if God says do it, do it, because he's going to empower you to do it because he's after glory. So she knew that. So in that statement, there was both revelation and empowerment. She was saying, whatever he says do, just do it. He's going to empower you to do it. There's going to be a great miracle that happens here, and he's going to allow, God's going to allow you to share in it. He's going to empower you to help him receive glory. Amen? Praise God. Verse 6. And there were set there six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. Jesus saith unto them. I want you guys to get so in tune with the Spirit of God that when you read your Bibles or when you hear God speak to you, that you just stop and listen. 
Because anytime God speaks, he's after victory and glory. And we want his will to be done in our lives. Amen. So we pause. Okay. So here we have Jesus saying, Jesus said unto them, fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. Say obedience. Obedience Obedience has to stay in place. Faith has to stay in place the whole time for victory to come. No matter how silly it's, whatever God says is going to seem like silliness to us. Okay? Because the word of God says this, that he confounds the wise. Amen? And the the word of God also says this, that the Foolishness of God is greater than the wisdom of men. So say this, say this with me. It does not have to make sense. What God tells you to do does not have to make sense. And I'll tell you why. The word of God says that his thoughts are above our thoughts and his ways are above our ways. Amen. So, verse 8, and he saith unto them, draw out now and bear it unto the governor of the feast, and they bear it. They gave it. So I believe this is where they had been washing their hands. The, the Jews had been purifying themselves. So just imagine for a minute. Let's just come, let's, let, let me just minister to the flesh, the fleshly part of you, okay? Absent from the spirit of God, absent from believing, absent from faith. So here's what you're telling me to do, Jesus. You want me to use, you want me to take this nasty water, put it in a cup, and giving it to the host of the wedding? Are you serious? You guys are looking at me like, well, what do you mean? I would have done it. No, no, because no, no, no. there's things Jesus has already told us to do that some of us haven't done. So don't go saying, well, I would have done it. Because there's some things that Jesus has already told us to do that seem like foolishness to us that we haven't done yet. So get out of your flesh and get into faith. Because the word of God says that we do not walk by sight, but we walk by what? Faith. So they said, okay, Jesus, I thank God for Mary's revelation that said, whatever he says to you, do it. No matter how foolish it seems, no matter how nervous you are, no matter how fearful you are, just do it. So they did it. Okay? Say this with me. Strategy. Strategy. So that was the strategy. All right? Jesus gave them strategy. Fill the water pots with water. So they filled them up to the brim. Draw out, draw out now and give it to the governor of the feast. Say strategy. Strategy. See, strategy is what you do. Okay? I'm sorry, I should have cut you off there, but I'm glad you're excited. Revelation is God revealing his will to us, who he is and what he can do. All right? Empowerment is he shares uh, his spirit with us. He empowers us to carry out something, to be a partaker of his glory, to help in the miracles. He allows flesh and blood to come along for the ride. Do you hear me? He allows flesh and blood to come along for the ride, revealing glory for his father. He allows us, the sons and daughters of the most high God, to help him get glory so his name is lifted up on high. He empowers us. Then he gives us strategy. So God reveals his will, empowers us, gives us strategy. Okay, so that's where we are. Verse 9, when the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and knew not whence it was or where it came from, but the servants which drew the water knew, (laughs) <laughs> you're drinking dirty water. I know where it came from, okay? The governor of the feast, after they had had it, he called the bridegroom, and he said unto him, Every man at the beginning does set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. But thou has kept the good wine until now. Praise God for the good wine. Praise God for his revelation. Praise God for his empowerment. Praise God for strategy that all leads to triumph or God receiving glory. All right? Verse 11. The, this beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his what? Say triumph. 
That's exactly what triumph is. The glory of God is manifested after the revelation comes, after the empowerment comes, after the strategy comes, then comes the triumph, and triumph never leads to our glory. How could these guys, all they did was get the water, out, fill up the pot, and put some in a cup and take it to the governor. They get no glory from that. All the glory belongs to God. So we must be very careful in our ministries to say that, you know what? All I'm doing is distributing what God has given me. I am nobody. I am only a vessel. That's it. He has equipped me and empowered me to deliver the good news or the good wine. Amen? Let's give God praise right now. <laughs> praise God. Are you understanding? Has it been broken down? Okay, so that is why God told me on the ship, all right, at the spot of vacation, on the spot of where I'm trying to achieve rest, Damien, I can do more through rest or you entering my rest than your activity. Because my activity apart from God leads to my glory. I'll be able to say, look what I did. It'd be like at the, at the marriage feast, let's just say there was another guy there at the marriage feast, and this is just me, you know, giving you an illustration. Let's just say Damien was there at the marriage feast. And I overheard, I overheard Mary telling Jesus that they ran out of wine. So what I do with that information is I run down to the local market and I buy some more wine and then I run it back to the wedding and say, look, more wine. You know what that is? That's self. That's flesh. That's me wanting glory. Okay, so we can never do that. It's not about what we accomplish. If we can get all the credit and all the glory for it, then it's not God ordained. All God ordained activity gives him all the glory because they'll be able to look at us and say, there is no way you did that. This is the same way my father and my mother look at me now, especially my father. Um, when they passed the church over almost three years ago, in his own heart, his own testimony was that boy's not ready. He is not ready. There is just no way he's ready. But he obeyed God and made me the pastor. And after about the second or the third Sunday, he was able to say, because of what God was doing, not Damien, and he'll tell you now to this day the words that are, he knows me. He raised me. He knows this ain't Damien. He knows it's me being used by the Spirit of God. So that's why I'm always quick to give God all the glory for what he's doing through this ministry. If I can get credit for it, then it robs God of glory. God is after glory. So it's time for us to take a look at everything that we're actively doing in life. Take a look at all your activity and shut it down for a minute. I'm not saying, well, pastor said, quit my job. He said, shut everything down. No, that's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying it's time to do some inventory in your life. And here's, praise God, I almost jumped off the stage. Here's a sign that it's your own activity is when you're weary, when you're tired, when you're frustrated, when you, oh, this is good. God is so good. When you have no revelation. When you have no empowerment, when you have no strategy, and you have no triumph, you're working on your own activity. And there is no glory to be had from God when we do things that are apart from his rest. We must strive to enter into his rest. See, God swore, see, every one of the children of Israel, except for just a few, died in the wilderness. Do you know why? Because he said he swore that he would not allow them to enter into his rest or his promised land. Why? Okay, let's make sure this isn't in us. Here we go. Here are some things that were in the children of Israel that kept them from getting into the promised land and entering into his rest. All right? Murmuring and complaining. Are you a complainer? Okay? Now, Who's got a watch? Somebody give me a watch quickly. 
I'm not saying to give it for offering. You'll get it back. All right. So when you have your eyes on time, when you've prayed and you want your will to be done in a certain amount of time and it does not happen yet, then that is where unrest begins to rise in you. Impatience, murmuring, complaining. God, where are you? People are watching. And most of the time, it's because we're after our own glory. That's why we keep looking at the clock. When is it time to celebrate me? When is it time for this to happen? So, say this with me. Not in my time, but his time. That's huge, okay? Because every prayer is not answered immediately. And that's why it's very important that you even pray, that you pray the will of God. Because he says that many prayers are not answered because we pray amiss. We pray in the wrong spirit. We pray so that the thing that we could obtain that thing for our own lustful desire. So what kept the children from entering rest that we must be sure is not in our heart, they begin to murmur and complain. They said, did you just bring us out of here to die? Is that why you brought us? Were there not enough graves in Egypt? They talked about the food that they walked away from when he was providing food from heaven for them. So they began to murmur and complain. Another thing they did, they spoke against leadership. I'm not saying that I'm all that, and I will never elevate myself, but I do tell you what the word of God says. It says, touch not his anointed. So if you are actively speaking against a pastor or your pastor, uh, the things that you speak in secret will be made known. And that is why that you do not have rest is because when you speak out against leadership, never put your mouth on another leader. Even when you feel like you got a right to say something and gossip and do this and do that, don't you do it. The word of God says love covers a multitude of sins. So if you're going to open your mouth to say something, it better be you open your mouth to pray. Amen. That felt kind of good to say, God. Thank you. All right, so they were murmuring and complaining. They were speaking against leadership. They were not being obedient to the word of God. So disobedience will cause you to lose your rest when you're not walking in the way and the will of God. Following the scriptures, following his spirit will allow you to miss entering into his rest. So those are the signs that we're in our own activity. We're frustrated, we're crying, we're worried. None of that stuff comes from God. Were they worried at, the, at this marriage feast? No, they just did what God said. Was Mary worried? Nope, she spoke her heart, they're out of wine. It doesn't say her complaining, what's taking so long, Lord? Why, why aren't you doing it? She just said, whatever he says, do, do it. So I want you to adopt this attitude, okay? That as you wait upon the Lord for whatever the thing is that you're believing God for, there's two ways to wait. Everyone put up two fingers, please. There's two ways to wait. The first one is patiently. What do you think the second one is? Impatiently. There's only two ways to wait, and there's only one wait that produces fruit. I'll let you guess, guess which one that is. Patience. We must patiently wait upon the Lord. Amen. I don't know why God is bringing this to a close right now. I know some of you want to celebrate. It's kind of early for us, but I have to be obedient to his spirit. I've given you a lot. In a little time, there's been a lot of revelation, and I don't want to, I don't want it running out of your mouths. I want you to be able to eat and chew on everything that God has given us today, okay? So, to, so I'm sorry, brother, you have to get the tape. <laughs> so I want you to understand this, okay? God told me on vacation, okay? I went, in va I went on vacation one way and came out another way, all right? I went in as a pastor just wanting it so bad for this church to grow and for things to go well and for us to be prosperous, not only um, prosperous as a church, but in my own personal life, I want it to be prosperous. So the way of man is activity. 
if you want it, you got to work for it, right? Isn't that what they tell us? Work hard, you can get achieve, you can do anything you dream. Just work hard and never give up, all right? But that's not the way of the Spirit. So he had to retrain me and say, Damien, all right, I can do more through, your, through rest, through you entering into my rest, than all of your activity combined. So I want to leave you with that. I want you to know that even though that God gave you the wisdom on how to do some things, you still got to wait for the green light. Even though it seems right, even though it feels right, I want you to, when you pull up to those, pull up to those divine intersections, okay, the intersection of decision, okay, before you go left or right or straight or backwards, I want you to pause. So picture, everyone close your eyes right, right now. And just picture, picture a traffic light, okay? God, I pray that you would just imprint this divine traffic light into our lives, that we don't go uh, driving on our own when it comes to making decisions, God. So let's tie in the word of God here. Your word of God says, lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge me, and I will direct your path. All right, you can open your eyes. Don't lean to your own understanding. Some of you, your intellect is your worst enemy. Some of you are so smart intellectually, you're gifted, you're brilliant, but it's still your own worst enemy because you feel like you can use it um, automatically. Slow down and say, God, I feel like this is the right thing to do, but I can't afford to be wrong. So help me to slow down and to hear from you, all right? The next time we're going to meet is Wednesday night, okay? And Wednesday night we're going to delve greater into revelation. We're going to learn how God speaks because what's the point of me telling you that rest it's yours. If I don't tell you the first letter and each letter and rest, I've got to tell you about how to receive revelation. OK, so that's what we're going to be talking about Wednesday night. You don't want to miss that. How to receive revelation, how to hear from God. Amen. Let's stand to our feet at this time. Thank you, Jesus. It's his desire that we all enter into his rest because it leads to glory for God. Jesus said this. He said, he does not do anything unless he sees the Father do it. So he doesn't do anything unless he's heard from his Father. Jesus was perfect at operating in rest. He waited for the revelation. He was equipped with power. Remember when he went out to meet John the Baptist as John was baptizing? And John said, Behold, the Lamb of God. And he came to be baptized. And as he was baptized, the Holy Spirit descended like a dove upon our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And he was empowered. So the revelation of who he was was known by him, but pretty soon it was going to be known by the entire world. So the revelation was there. Then comes the empowerment. God empowered his son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. Say this with me. I have the same Holy Spirit. So you have all been divinely empowered to do the will of God, to enter into his rest, that leads to his glory. Say this with me, Lord, give me strategy. So we need to know the how, the when, the why. All the ins and outs of God's will will be revealed in his strategy that leads to his triumph. So I'm here to tell you, everyone, it's time to just pause. Take a divine Selah. Take divine rest in your lives 
because there's some things that you're doing that seem right, but it's just wearing you out, and God's got getting no glory. It's like you're a hamster running on a wheel, and you're just wearing yourself out, and that wheel is not going anywhere. So I want you to know this, that when a man is performing a thing or an activity in his own mind or his own will, that he's on a wheel. He's just at a standstill, and he's going nowhere but burning lots of energy. All right? The only way to get off the wheel is to get in the will of God. And when you get in the will of God, his favor comes upon your life and things begin to shift and things begin to move. And why? Because it's for his glory and not our own. That's why Jesus was able to say, listen, nevertheless, although what you want me to do is hard, and I know you empowered me to do it, but it's still hard, but nevertheless, not my will be done, but let thine will be done. Because God's revelation leads to God's triumph. God gets all the glory when we are still. Because the word of God says this. This is all he wants us to do. This is what rest means. Get off the wheel, your wheel of self activity. And get into God's will and just be still. And then from this position, here's what happens. God says, be still and see the salvation of the Lord. What's that mean? He wants to do it all. He wants to do it all. We're wearing ourselves out when he wants to do it all. He wants all the glory in your marriage, all the glory in your finances, all the glory in your children, but your way is the wrong way every time. Our way is the wrong way every single time. There's only one way, and it's got to be his way. And he says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Nobody comes to the Father except by me. No glory through your life goes back to the Father except by me. Wait for my revelation, my empowerment, my strategy, and it will lead to triumph for us all. We'll share in the victory of Jesus Christ. The Word of God says that even right now that we are seated in heavenly places in Jesus Christ. He's obtained all the victory for us. All he wants us to do is to be still and see the salvation of God. And there's something else that we must do while we're still be still and know that I am God. So listen, the enemy's going to come in like a flood while you're being still. See, it's our nature to be active again. The bill needs paid or this needs done or this needs fixed. It's our nature to get back on that wheel and get back to our own activity and be worn out again. But God is saying, be still and know. When you can be still and know, you can look at the waves crashing around you. You can look at the storms bearing down in your life, but you can know, Lord, you said to be still. You said if I obey your word that you would, you would save me and you'd rescue me. You said that although weapons would form against me, they would not prosper. So I'm going to remain still, and I'm just going to know that you're God and you've got this. I'm not going to get back on that wheel of self-effort. I'm going to allow the salvation of God to be seen in my life. If that's your desire today, is to get off the wheel of self-activity and trying to fulfill things on your own and to get into the will of God and enter the rest of God, I want you to just raise your hands high right where you are. Raise your hands high right where you are. And raise them both. Raise them both. Because anytime a police officer uh, goes into a building and sees somebody doing something wrong, he says, stick them up. We want absolute surrender. We want to see both hands. So if we really mean, God, that we surrender and we're done living in self, we're done trying to achieve things on our own. It takes absolute surrender. So, Father, here we are. We're surrendering ourselves. And, God, can you please break the wheel? 
We desire that there, no, there be no wheel to go back to. We desire to put dead works to death. We desire to put our self-righteousness aside and to just remain in your will, to only move when the cloud moves, to only move when the fire moves, to only move when your spirit says move, because it is in you that we live, we move, and we have our being. I pray these, this thing for each of these individuals in Jesus' name. If there's anyone here today that is tired and just ready to surrender their life fully to Jesus Christ, they're ready to come forward, to leave the past behind, to leave sin behind, you're tired of being beat up, 